I am always excited when somebody stops by to speak on the channel. But today I am super excited to not only speak, but to learn about Roots music from one of the genre's leaders. I would like to welcome to the channel four-time Grammy-nominated artist, Ruthie Foster. Many are familiar with you as a blues or folk singer. So for those who are unaware, how would you describe folk music? I would call folk music everybody's music because a lot of folk music came out of blues, gospel, soul, field hollers, um, a lot of the African-American community. This is uh, a lot of our history and our culture. I truly believe it's where folk music started. When the concept of race records emerged in the 1920s, African-American music began to be significantly recorded. OK Records recorded a litany of black artists singing the blues, spirituals, jazz, and field songs. Among those artists included Mamie Smith, Alberta Hunter, Bessie Smith, Sippy Wallace, Ma Rainey, Blind Lemon Jefferson, Gladys Bentley, Mississippi John Hurt, Memphis Minnie, Victoria Spivey, and Lead Belly. I think with folk music, it's almost educational. It gives you a chance to actually get educated on where music comes from, where all of this pop music that you're hearing, where it comes from, uh, even the soul music, where that all comes from. Gospel is a huge root for folk music. Is that another reason why the term roots music is interchangeable with the term folk music? Yeah, I think they are uh, very much related, if not brother and sister. You know, to me, it is the same. They're about culture. It's about heritage. It's about educating. It's about foot stomping. It's about the, the, the what do they used to call it? Hootin' nannies. It's about barnyard dances. Yeah, they're, they're very, very intertwined. Early non-commercial Black Roots music was also recorded by John Lomax, a musicologist and folklorist who began doing field recordings in 1933. I had heard all the symphonies there were and all the chamber music and, and the best jazz, and I said, this is the greatest music. There were 50 Black men who were working under the whip and the gun, and they had the soul to make the most wonderful song I'd ever heard. In the 1940s and 50s, artists like Josh White, the Golden Gate Quartet, Sister Rosetta Thorpe, Sonny Terry, Big Bill Brunzi, and Ball Robeson were all major players in the wave of a folk music revival. But throughout the 50s and 60s, artists such as Odetta, called the Queen of American Folk Music by Martin Luther King Jr., Nina Simone, Richie Havens, Lynn Chandler, Taj Mahal, and Bernice Johnson Reagan would emerge with political and cultural messages, continuing the tradition of presenting songs from the Black American tradition alongside new compositions that connected the past struggles with what were the contemporary struggles of the time. White artists such as Bob Dylan and Joan Baez would hail Odetta as a foundational influence in their interest in folk music. I always felt that way about blues. When I didn't know nothing about it, when I listened to it, I always felt that 
that there was something, an honesty there that, like, uh, 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 Peggy Lee was lacking. And now the kids are open enough to be able to say, well, now, wait a minute with Lawrence Welk. Let me listen for myself. I thought it was really happening, man. And those kids are listening. And so they're giving themselves a chance. They're getting into Indian music. They're getting into black music. They're getting into any kind of music that they feel is telling the truth. And the next generation of white rock and rollers, such as Janis Joplin and the Rolling Stones, would declare black folk and blues artists as their primary inspirations. No more good time ere I Place the stone that my head. People of color, black people, have always been present in folk music since its early years. A lot of those people, especially today, may not be as well known. Do you think that the folk music genre or the blues genre is underrepresented? I think it's underrepresented by us. You know, it's it's uh, seems to be pretty well represented by some of my, um, you know, my, my white uh, entertainers, that's for sure. And they're doing a beautiful job of that. But I would really like to see more of us out here. And we are out here. That's the thing. Where are the keys to the kingdom? Oh, standing at the door. And I want to come in. Oh, where are the keys? In the post-counterculture era, Black Roots artists moved their music forward in various fields. Bernice Johnson Reagan's Sweet Honey and the Rock presented their fusion of political gospel and folk songs in the lesbian feminist world of women's music. Linda Tillery, Gwen Avery, and DJ Makalta did as well. Tracy Chapman, whose major stage debut was for women's music's Linda Tillery in 1985, took folk music back into the mainstream with 1986's Fast Car, which just hit number one on the country charts for Luke Combs, making Chapman the first black woman to score a number one country single as a solo composition. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, the sound continued to evolve. Cab Moe, Eric Bibb, and Shamika Copeland were just a few artists using folk and blues sounds together, taking the sound back to international audiences. There are a lot of us out here, still, we do manage to uh, we manage to fill up venues. We manage to get pretty good crowds, and we manage to make a living. This is what I do full time, and uh, I've been really blessed in that way to be an educator through music and uh, a performer, entertainer. Um. Do you think there will come a time where the traditional genres like the blues and the folk will make its way back into the 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 mass listening audience? I hope so. Mm. I think it, it has in some respect um, in Europe, in particular parts of Europe, it's definitely recognized and revered and respected and studied. I have never been around so many people um, who know so much about blues and the history of it. Um, not just the music itself, but the the writers, the entertain the entertainers, people who who were uh, in a, a obscure places. A lot of the Europeans I've been to European uh, festivals. Well, these folks are educating me <laughs> on my own sound. Today, artists like Miko Marks, Lily Lewis, Alison Russell, Rhiannon Giddens, The War and Treaty, Yola, The Alexis P. Sutter Band, Bronetta Davis, Toshi Reagan, and Ruthie Foster tread new ground in the burgeoning Americana scene. A hotbed of folk, blues, gospel, and country music reminding listeners of where the music came from and where the tradition began. A 
question of uh, what I've learned about roots music and its overlap with so many other genres. Would you say that at its root, <laughs> no pun intended, roots music is about the the personal experience? Yes, <laughs> you nailed it. You you absolutely nailed it. It is about the personal experience and relaying that and. Um, Putting it up, just putting it out there so that someone else can relate to it. Hmm. I think that's the huge part of it. People go to concerts, people go to hear music because you, it's almost like um, someone explained it to me about having a partner. It's about having a witness. It's a witness to your life. I think that's what Roots music is. <laughs> 